The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six, seven, seven. Scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Yes, Lucky Strike is milder, and science provides the proof. Test after test produced conclusive evidence of Lucky Strike's greater mildness. But that's not all. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. Yes, with every Lucky Strike you light, you get a truly smoother smoking, milder tasting cigarette. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. And here's one big reason why Lucky Strike is milder. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment. So for the rich taste of fine tobacco, for smoothness and mildness, light up a Lucky. Yes, prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a local subscriber to the weekly publication printed by the boys of the Beverly Hills Beavers, you know that tonight the members of the club are putting on a play at the school auditorium. Of course, Jack Benny, who happens to be the treasurer of the club, is planning to go. And at the moment, Rochester is pressing Jack's suit. Press it once and press it twice, then press it once again. It's been a long, long time. <laughs> Well, I got the pants pressed. Now for the coat. Hmm, what's this he's got in here? Well, a bag of rice. Oh, yes, Vice President Barclay's wedding. <laughs> Mr. Benny wasn't invited, but that didn't stop him. <laughs> he put on his tuxedo, went to the newsreel, and threw rice at the screen. <laughs> I better finish pressing the coat before... Hmm, what do you know? The price tag is still under the collar. Twenty-two fifty. That isn't much to pay for a tuxedo. I wonder where he bought it. Should be on the label. Yeah, here it is. The Pep Boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, in those days they used to be. Oh, a... Rochester, Rochester, have you finished pressing my clothes yet? Yes, boss. But who was the last one you rented this tuxedo to? Why? Every time I lay the coat down, the arms fold. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? Anyway, you're only going to a school play. Why dress formal? Rochester, the Beavers aren't putting on just a play. They're going to do their version of my radio program. You see, each one of the kids will portray a member of my cast. Oh. And since I'm the inspiration for their show, they may ask me to come up on the stage and make a speech. Gosh, I haven't made a speech since Vice President Barkley's wedding. And then I didn't get to finish it. The feature picture came on. <laughs> anyway, Rochester, this play the kids are putting on is... I'll get it. Hmm. It's strange. There's no one here. Now, why would anybody ring a doorbell and then... Hmm. That's funny. Nobody here this time, either. Boss, put your glasses on. That door's to the closet. <laughs> oh. I'll get it. Want a bit? Never mind. <laughs> oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What took you so long to answer the door? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, why are you here so early? We don't leave for the school auditorium for an hour yet. Well, I couldn't find my coat, and I thought maybe I left it over here. Your coat? I don't think so. Did you look in the closet? Oh, did he? <laughs> your coat's not in there, Mary. Now, as soon as I get dressed, we'll go. Here's your tuxedo, boss. Uh, help me on with the coat, Rochester. I want to see if it still fits. Thanks. Jack. 
If you wear that old thing, I'm not going with you. What? You got that tuxedo when you first went into vaudeville. It's so old-fashioned now. Old-fashioned? Yes. Look how long the coat is. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> you look like the villain in The Drunkard. <laughs> Only when I wear the cape. <laughs> now, Mary... Ah, me proud beauty. If you don't pay the mortgage, I'll throw you and the baby out in the snow. <laughs> Mary, stop, will you please? <laughs> Well, look, Jack, I'll make you a proposition. Huh? If you'll buy a new tuxedo, I'll take you down to the May Company and get you a big discount. Mary, you mean that after all these years you've been working for me, the May Company still gives you a discount? They send me food, too. <laughs> now, cut that out. I'm going to wear the tuxedo I've got, and that settles it. Now, Rochester, I won't be home and... I'll get it. Hello? Hiya, Jackson. I just called you to find out if I can cancel tomorrow's band rehearsal on account of... Don't crowd me, lady. I'll be off the phone in a minute. <laughs> Bill, where are you calling from? The corner drugstore. I'm picking up some medicine for Remley. What? Well, that's why I want to cancel the rehearsal. Frankie's got an awful cold. Lady, stop crowding me. <laughs> What's the matter with Frankie anyway? He's always catching cold. Yeah, he caught this last one sleeping next to an open window. An open window? Well, why didn't he close it? It wouldn't have done any good. He was on the outside of the house. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard, sleeping outside of the house. Why didn't he go in? Wasn't his house. <laughs> what? I told him a million times, don't take them shortcuts. <laughs> don't crowd me, lady. I'm rolling. <laughs> Well, okay, Phil, you can have band rehearsal the next day. I can't do that either, Jackson. That's why I'm trying to get Remley over his call. You see, he's, uh, he's getting married that day. Huh? Remley's getting married? Well, that's certainly news to me. Where's Frankie's wedding going to take place? At the little bar around the corner. <laughs> well, Phil, if I know Remley's friends, who's going to stand up for him? <laughs> Don't crowd me, Mary. I'm rolling. <laughs> well, look, Phil, don't worry about the band rehearsal. You can have it any time. Goodbye. So long. Oh, by the way, Jackson, uh, did you get that record I sent you this morning? Yes, Phil, but I haven't played it yet. What is it? Well, it's a song called Wilhelmina. You see, it's from the picture I just made, Wabash Avenue, and uh, I do it with a sportsman quartet. Oh, well, I'll play it as soon as I... Just a minute, Dad. What's that, lady? Oh, you just realized who I am, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, just a minute. I'm giving the lady my autograph. Oh. Hey, Jackson. Huh? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. What is it? Does sincerely start with a C? <laughs> yes, Phil. C I. I got the rest of it. So long, Clyde. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Oh, Mary, Phil sent me a record that he made with the Sportsman Quartet. Let's play it, will you? Okay. Where is it? Right there by the phonograph. And play it loud, Mary, so I can hear it in the other room while I'm getting dressed. <laughs> Wilhelmina, she's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, she has all the fellas crazy in the noggin. In Copenhagen. And the roses on her cheeks. And the music when she speaks. And how sweet her kisses taste. Sugar cane is like my mama's baby's pastry. Wilhelmina. Well, maybe soon we will elope in Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, we'll share everything, including my toboggan. In Copenhagen, all the other girls say no. Oh, no. But Wilhelmina, she says nine. No time. All the boys call Wilhelmina Willie. Yeah. But I call Wilhelmina mine. Smoke a lucky, and you'll never find a cigarette that's smoother. Smoke a lucky, ask your father, mother, sister, and your brother. Your brother? There's a line and mile to see, just a cigarette for me. Yes, it's L-S-M-F-T. And that means Lucky Strike is made of fine tobacco. Wilhelmina, smoking Lucky's all day long in Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, if she didn't, she'd be crazy in the noggin. In Copenhagen, all the other girls want Phil. But Wilhelmina, she says nine. 
she would rather have a pack of lucky, cause she thinks lucky strikes a fight. Who will, Amina? That ever loving Gallimard. Say, Mary, that was very good, you know, and it was thoughtful of Phil to get the sportsman to do it with him. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. There's a little more on the record. There is? Play it. Good health to all from Rexall. (laughs) I knew he'd get that. (laughs) Say, Jack, don't you think it's about time we left for the school auditorium? Yes, we haven't got much time. Rochester, get my car out of the garage. You can't use the car, boss. A nail went through one of the tires. Oh. I told you not to buy such cheap tires. Rochester, the most expensive tire in the world can be punctured by a nail. A fingernail? (laughs) Well, what did you touch it for? (laughs) Always testing. (laughs) Now what are we going to do? I've got my car outside. Okay, Mary, we'll go in yours. Come on. Bye, Rochester. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mary, wasn't that a nice song from Phil's picture? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, she's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen, in Copenhagen. Jackie Benny, you've got the truest, bluest eyes in any noggin. <laughs> in walkie garden. <laughs> I tried to get Walt Keegan in there. I had a tough time with that. da 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 bum Look, Jack, here comes Dennis on a bicycle. Where? Hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, uh, hello, kid. Say, we were just leaving for the school auditorium. Aren't you going to see the Beverly Hills Beavers put on their play? Oh, sure, but it's such a nice night, I thought I'd ride over on my new bicycle. Oh, is that a new one, Dennis? Yeah, I won it last night on a quiz program. On a quiz program? Gosh, you're really lucky. Yeah. Was it a hard question? Oh, no, it was easy. The man pointed at me and said, would you pay $100 for this bicycle? I said, yes, so I gave him the $100, and he gave me the bicycle. (laughs) Dennis. I almost won a refrigerator, but I didn't have enough money. (laughs) Look, kid. Dennis. Look, look at me, look. Did the master of ceremonies of this quiz program have a little hammer in his hand? Yeah. Dennis, you were at an auction. Certainly. <laughs> and all those people crowded around, they were bidding. Now, come on, we better get to the school auditorium. Okay. Oh, by the way, Dennis, did you ask your mother if you could go quail hunting with me again next week? Yeah. Dennis, I didn't know you go with Mr. Benny on his hunting trip. Oh, sure. I'm his retriever. <laughs> You mean when he shoots, you bring back the quail? No, when he misses, I have to bring back the buckshot. (laughs) All right, all right. Now, Dennis, leave your bicycle here and come with us. Okay. Say, this school auditorium really is packed. Well, we got pretty good seats, haven't we, Mary? Oh, these are fine. Right in the center. Can you see all right, Dennis? No. Well, why don't you ask that man in front of you to take off his hat? It isn't his. What? It's mine. I put it there. (laughs) Dennis, are you crazy? Why would you do a thing like that? Full heads upset me. (laughs) Oh, be quiet, will you? Hey, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Joey. Is everything ready backstage for your show? Uh-huh. Are, uh, are the kids nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Well, good luck. Thanks, Mr. Benny. And by the way, you'll be happy to know that we're almost sold out of the popcorn you made. <laughs> good, good. Now, push the lemonade. <laughs> okay. Oh, just a minute, Joey. Did you finally get a fat kid to play Don Wilson? No, but we're letting Warren do it, and we stuffed the pillow on his shirt. Oh, fine, fine. Now, you better hurry. You'll be late. Well, Mary, it won't be long now before the show starts. Gee, I hope the beavers really do a... Hey, Mary. Mary. Huh? 
Don't look now, but there's a lady across the aisle who keeps staring at me. I guess she recognizes me. Where? Shh. Here she comes. Uh, pardon me, but would you be good enough to give me your autograph? Why, certainly. There you are. Thank you. You were wonderful in the drunkard. <laughs> hmm. I told you not to wear that cape. I'll take it off. You know, Mary, this idea of the, of the little kids doing my radio program is really clever, isn't it? Yes, Jack. I think it's the cutest. Oh, the curtain's going up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And look, look, they've even got a kid orchestra. Quiet. Here they go. <laughs> Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to bring to you the star of our show, a man who still has the first dollar he ever earned. Not because he's cheap, but because you can't spend Confederate money. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, did you think up that introduction all by yourself? Yes, I did, Jack, and I thought it was very funny. Oh, you did, huh? Yes. Don, Don, blubber boy. <laughs> there's, an old, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, big fat announcer who make insulting joke about boss soon finds salary not big fat. <laughs> And another thing, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hiya, Don. Say, Mary, I called you last night, but your maid said you were out. That's right. I went to the baseball game with Van Johnson. Oh, that was nice. Who won? When you're with Van Johnson, who watches the game? <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Stop ad living. <laughs> dropped on the floor. That? Oh, that's the letter I got from Mama. Oh, from your mother, huh? What does the wild goose of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to let you know that we are all well. The weather is nice here. Now, but as you probably read in the paper, last week we had an awful blizzard. And when your Uncle Harry came in from the barn, his milking hand was frozen. <laughs> Gee. I hope it thaws out soon, as we'd like to get the cow out of the house. <laughs> Sister Babe. Ah, this is the part I always wait for. Quiet. Since your, <laughs> since your sister Babe got married, she decided to have her teeth straightened. Babe's teeth do protrude a little. I'll never forget the ceremony when the minister said, Do you take this man to be, to be your husband? Babe opened her mouth to say, I do, and ripped her veil to shreds. Hey, Mary. Mary, that little girl is a natural-born actress. It... Yeah, she went right on reading the letter, even though her bloomers were slipping down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no other news, so we'll close now. With love, your loving mother, Mama. You know, Mary, your mother... Well, look who's here! Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my girl, <laughs> Hello, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Livy, you gorgeous hunk of whistle bait, you. <laughs> By the way, how are Alice and the children? Oh, fine. I just left them. I took them over to the park for a rehearsal for next week's May party. 
A May party? Yeah, you should have seen all them kids. They looked so cute, they danced around me. Danced around you? Didn't they have a maple? Yeah, but, oh, I was prettier. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Say, Phil, I've been trying to get in touch with you all week. Where have you been? Well, me and Remley went hunting up in the high Sierra. Oh, did you hunt bear? Well, we... <laughs> Jackson. Huh? Throw me that lead again, will you? <laughs> okay. Did you hunt bear? No, we were dressed to kill. <laughs> oh, Harris, that joke alone ought to make CBS buy it. <laughs> Phil. Phil. Pencil head. <laughs> that joke alone ought to make CBS put in air conditioning <laughs> So you can stop with those Come in Telegram for Jack Benny I'm Jack Benny, I'll take it Here you are, sir And here's a tip for you Oh boy, a nickel Now I can send my father through college <laughs> Hmm, now let's see I wonder who this telegram oh, Jack. is Jack oh, What is it, Don? Did you only give that boy a nickel tip? Yes, Don. Why? Well, that convinced me. You're without a doubt the cheapest, most miserly, most parsimonious man I have ever known in my life. Well! <laughs> now look, Don. Don is right. You are cheap. Mary, be quiet or you'll be known as Nylon Nelly at the May Company. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to... Hello, have... Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dana. Hey, kid, I'm glad you got here because it's time for your... Wait a minute. Dennis, look at me. Huh? <laughs> Dennis, this is the first time I ever saw you wearing glasses. Uh, are your eyes bad? No. Then why are you wearing those glasses? My uncle died and left them to me. <laughs> Your uncle? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I can't see a darn thing with him. <laughs> well, for heaven's sakes, kid, if you can't see with him, take him off. Just because somebody leaves you something in a will, you're not compelled to use it. I'm not? No. Want to buy a set of teeth? <laughs> now cut that out. And take off those glasses. It's time for your song. My mother said I shouldn't sing in your program anymore. Why not? She hates you. <laughs> what? Dennis, why does your mother dislike Jack so much? She used to go with Mr. Benny before she met my father. She did not She said she did What was your mother's name before she married your father? I didn't know her then <laughs> Now, Dennis, I'm tired of your silly talk Let's have your song Okay Now, Clancy was a peaceful man, if you know what I mean The cops picked up the pieces after Clancy left the scene He never looked for trouble at the fact you can't assume But nevertheless, when trouble would press, Clancy lowered the boom Oh, that Clancy! Oh, that Clancy! Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom Boom, 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 boom Oh, Larry was the fighting man, they all knew he was tough He strutted round the neighborhood, just shooting off his guff He picked a fight with Clancy, then and there he sealed his doom before you could shout, oh, Larry, look out, Clancy, Lord. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his iron up, Clancy lower the boom, 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 boom. Now Clancy left the barber shop with tonic on his hair. He walked into the pool room and he met O'Reilly there. O'Reilly said, for goodness sakes, now do I smell perfume? Before you could stack your cue in the rack, Clancy lower the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lower the boom, 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 boom.
them. The neighbors all turned out for Kate O'Grady's wedding night. Meg Dougal said, let's have some fun. I, I think I'll start a fight. He wrecked the hall, but kissed the bride and pulverized the groom. Then quick as a wink before you can think. Clancy, lower the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his eye, reach up. Clancy, lower the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lower the boom, 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 boom. Sure, it was the most beautiful sight you ever did see when Clancy lowered the boom. <laughs> too, Dennis. That's right, Dennis. You have a beautiful voice. I know. That's why I have two shows. <laughs> all right, all right. That kid drives me nuts. No wonder I'm gray, and I'm only 39. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester. Got some news for you. When I went shopping this morning, I put the car in the parking lot. Uh-huh. And when I came out of the market, there was a man standing there, and he wanted to buy your car. He did? Well, I hope you told him my price was a $1,000. Uh-huh. But he told me that the used car market has dropped some of the last few days. Oh. Well, what did he offer you? Seven fifty. Oh, <laughs> well, that isn't so bad. You ought to see where the decimal point is. <laughs> for my car? Grab it fast, Bob. You're talking to the Irishman and he ain't smiling. <laughs> well, I don't care if he's smiling or not, offering $7.50 for my car. Well, the steering wheel is worth more than that. We ain't got one. <laughs> no steering wheel? Then how did you get it downtown? Same old way. Last through the sunset bus. <laughs> Well, look, Rochester, you tell this fellow that if he wants to buy my car, he can have it for $1,000 and not a cent less. Okay, just a minute. Hmm, imagine offering me $7 and a half for my car. It's in wonderful condition. Still has the original rubber on the windshield wiper. <laughs> I couldn't sell that. Oh, Bob. Uh, yes? The man said he'd give you $9 for the car if you throw in the last loop. What? <laughs> Ten fifty if you teach him how to use it. <laughs> Rochester, stop being on his side. You know as well as I do if the car's worth at least a thousand dollars. Oh, Bob, come now. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, tell the man I'm not selling it anyway, and come down to the studio and pick me up. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> You try to put on a program and everybody interrupts you. Play, Phil. Lemonade. Get your lemonade in the lobby. Jack! Oh, I'm sorry. Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, in a cigarette, mildness means enjoyment. And scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. These scientific tests are confirmed by independent consulting laboratories, and they prove Lucky Strike, mildest of six major brands tested. And no wonder it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette, and LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. So for a milder tasting cigarette with never a rough puff, smoke a Lucky You'll enjoy the smooth, rich taste of Lucky's fine tobacco. You'll prove to yourself what scientific tests prove. Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand of cigarettes. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. We're a little late, folks. I want to thank all the kids of the Beverly Hills Beavers. Good night. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned to the Amistad and Show. It follows immediately... 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>